Hello, everyone. I, like millions of other people, saw Avengers Endgame this past weekend. I saw it on Saturday in a packed theater, which I felt really amplified it. There was so much energy in the room. Everyone was so excited, and that just made it so much better. But I just wanted to give a couple thoughts about the movie, considering it's one of the biggest cinema events that some of us have seen in our lifetimes. I mean, this is our generation's Star Wars, and it's just really cool to see this happening in real time. So to start off, the movie is three hours long. If you're going to be seeing it, you need to know that. You need to be aware that you're going to have to hold your bladder for a while. And this also means that the beginning is a little bit slow because they're tying everything together and they're starting to build up to the later stuff that happens. They have to set it all up. But man, the payoff is really good. So the basic plot of the movie is that the Avengers kill Thanos and that doesn't solve anything. They kill him about 20 days after Infinity War and then it does the time skip five years later. Ant-Man shows up, a rat steps on his time machine and he pops out of it. And he goes and finds the Avengers, and he tells everyone how to go back in time. So they divide up, and they travel to different parts of the past to get the Infinity Stones. They go back to 2012 New York. They go back to 2013 Asgard. And they go back to 2014, uh, the planet that Star-Lord is on at the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy. So there's a lot of good references. There's a lot of good quips. They have a scene where Captain America says, Hail Hydra to get one of the stones. And it's, it's just really great. They have character interactions. Everything's really cool. All the highs are super high. And the lows are really low. But before I get to the lows, I really liked Ant-Man's role. He was funny. I felt like he really came into his own this movie. They bring out Professor Hulk, who was really cool to see on the screen. They hit him in the, all the promos and stuff. Uh, Thor gains some weight. It gets played for a joke. They, they do mention Fortnite, if you've heard of that. That does happen in the movie. Nebula and Gamora get some decent screen time. And I really liked seeing the evolution of Nebula's character from when we first saw her. And there's a bunch of other side characters that get some cool scenes. Like we've got Thor's mom shows up. Loki even shows up. We've got Peggy. Basically everyone's back for this. Even Tony Stark's dad. And speaking of Tony, I really like the relationships they built with his family. In the five years that passed between Infinity War and Endgame, he builds. He has a daughter. He, gives, he lives on a lake with his wife, Pepper Potts. And they set all that up for us just to crush it later at the end of the film. He even gets to meet his father, and I think that's part of the reason he decides to do what he does. But more on that later. The last third of the movie is absolutely the best part of the movie. It might even be the best in the Marvel Universe so far. It's the big battle with past Thanos. He comes to the Avengers HQ and he blows it up. And from there, it's a game of keep away with Thanos in the middle, and they're trying to make sure he doesn't get his hands on the Infinity Gauntlet. But before this, Hulk had used the gauntlet and brought back everyone who was snapped. So... Iron Man, Thor, and Cap team up to fight Thanos. It's awesome, but they get wrecked. And right when you think Thor's about to die, Cap throws Mjolnir, Thor's hammer, which they got in the past when they went back in time. And it's just that entire scene was very cool. Everybody in my theater clapped. And then right when Thanos gets the upper hand again, he brings his army, and it's just, it's just Captain America standing alone by himself. There's a great shot. It's a beautiful shot. And right when you think it's all over, you hear Sam come in and he says hey cap on your left and then all of dr strange's portals come in and they bring back literally everybody in the marvel universe and they all fight thanos's army it's a really cool scene but uh let's move on to the deaths black widow is the first person to die she dies trying to get the soul stone with hawkeye i didn't expect this i thought it was going to be hawkeye because they were doing a prequel movie for her i didn't think they'd kill her off like it didn't make much sense for me uh, Hawkeye comes out as Ronin. He has to deal with all the consequences of the things he did after the snap. Uh, they had a great twist on Gamora's death from Infinity War, where instead of Thanos throwing Gamora off the cliff, they both try to throw themselves off the cliff so that the other doesn't have to sacrifice themselves. And then Black Widow does it. She jumps off. She dies the same way Gamora did. They do the same shots. And it was, it was pretty neat. It was unexpected. I didn't expect it. I think they could have devoted a little bit more time to exploring the consequences of her death. But the movie had a lot more to cover, that being that big third act I was talking about. The other death is Tony Stark, the one who started it all. And it makes sense. This is He's bookending this massive franchise, the first part of it or whatever they're planning. And, man, his death hit hard. It was rough. He, Thanos gets the gauntlet, and Tony secretly sneaks away the Infinity Stones, and he snaps. And this puts him in a catatonic state. And then he doesn't say anything else, and he dies. And it just it hits hard. It was, a, it was a hard scene. I honestly thought he was going to be safe since he almost died in Infinity War. I thought Captain America was going to die. But no, it was, it was Tony. 
Doctor Strange has this really cool scene where he holds up one finger to let Tony know that he has to sacrifice himself for the one chance of winning. And that's when he does it. And it just, it all happens so fast. Man, crazy scene. The Snapped all get some cool scenes when they come back for the big fight. Captain Marvel doesn't really do too much. She blows up a, a spaceship at the end. But it makes sense because she's super powerful. She gets punched in the face by Thanos, which was, again, unexpected. The funeral for Iron Man was pretty sad. You got to see all the characters again, though, which was nice. You got to see the guy from Iron Man 3. The kid was there. Everyone was at the funeral paying tribute to the guy who started it all. There's a nice scene where they send his arc reactor out into the lake. It was just... It was, it was a touching moment. It was sad. I cried. A lot of people cried. And then right after that, they hit you with Captain America going back in time to put the, the Infinity Stones back. And he comes back as a old man because he spent his whole life married to Peggy. And that's just the one-two punch. He passes the mantle of Captain America to Sam. Bucky watches. It was a pretty cool scene. I can't wait to see Captain Falcon in the movies. That'll be really exciting. Overall, I thought it was a great movie. I'd give it a 9 out of 10. It did exactly what it needed to do, which is tie up 11 years of this franchise. The only reason I'm not giving it a 10 is because there were some spots where the pacing kind of dragged. Like, one of my friends was like, oh, if you want, you can go to this, the bathroom during this scene because nothing important happens here. But it was stuff that they had to do. You know, they had to build up to the ending of the series. And there were also some moments where after somebody died, they just went into another joke really quick, and it kind of spoiled the moment. But... You know, it's Marvel. They were doing their humor thing. Overall, it felt like a great end to the franchise for me. They did a great job. They did exactly what they set out to do. And I think we can see that they made $1 billion in four days. I think I've reached my stop on the Marvel hype train for a while. And I think I'm ready for a little break after seeing the end of this saga of 23 movies. Uh, we'll see, though, because I'm sure they've got some cool stuff coming down the line. Have a good one, everyone.